I'll, I'll repeat your time. When you, I want you to define public. You know, you said 90% of the public is against the exchange. Yes. Okay. What is that? I don't County, Lava County, Benoit County, or there. Everybody. Everybody. Well, people, when, 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 uh, friends of the, of the Calouse Ranger District started involved. They went to county meetings. They went Benoit County, Clearwater County, everywhere. The input, but there was a tremendous input, as you can oh, see. I realize that, but how, where did Lato County? Where did, how do you get 90, how do you know it was 90 percent? Because you can get, you can call up the responses by, uh, and, and, and look at those. So you have a number, I mean there's a definite number. If people responded and you counted up who was against it. 90% were against it. Okay. I, I charted it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Is that what you are going to say? Under Freedom of Information, we requested copies of all comments, and we have those in our possession. Hey, I wasn't, I wasn't really accusatory. I just wanted to define uh, for the record what we're talking about. It was, <coughs> and it wasn't far in excess of 90%. Okay, thank you. I just had a comment and question. Uh, I, the comment just being that I never, I, the whole time that I've heard people talk about this particular exchange, I rarely have ever come across somebody that thought it was a good idea. I so I, I, and I don't know if I've ever heard anybody say it was a good idea. I, I, so I just feel like that, I'm not questioning the percentages at all. Oh, I, I, mean, I, I agree. No, no, I've never heard anybody. Yeah, yeah, you're, just, you're just trying to get the empirical point of it. So um, the, the question I have, um, Maybe it's for John or, or anybody else. The the draft EIS. The t I'm a little bit confused about the timeline. Here. So the the draft EIS has it been formally suspended or just not never responded to? You or what 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 happened and why did it? Maybe Marilyn. Uh, this is Marilyn. Um, so the the draft the original draft environmental impact statement was released. And uh, the the um, there was a lot of uh, dissent from uh, the Idaho County commissioners to the Forest Service as a result um, because they <coughs> felt they did not uh, want any more public land in Idaho County. As a group, they came out saying we either want all of the if there's going to be any exchange at all. Uh, we want it all in Idaho County, or we will not support the land exchange. And they asked the Forest Service County to do another environmental impact statement that would do an acre for uh, an acre for acre rather than a value for value land exchange. Is what the Forest Service is legally bound to do: acre for acre in Idaho County. And even though it was outside the Forest Service. Um, legal authority to, to conduct such a land exchange. The supervisor at that time, Rick Revel, said, well, we have to do it because the county asked us to. So they did another voluminous impact, environmental impact statement, statement, which they called the Supplemental Draft Environmental Impact Statement, to follow up the original draft environmental impact statement that took into account Laytaw County six different counties and three different national forests. That was the first one. The second one was just Idaho County. Some of the lands in the second one had also been in the first one. That was Just follow up. So so there was never any finalization of, no. of any of it. And no no uh, anticipated final date or anything. No, and the and but and the interesting one interesting sideline to this, uh, uh, ex uh, Ranger Larry Ross from the Coos District was in Peck uh, before Rich took over. Before Rich asked the uh, Forest Service to uh, suspend their NEPA process, which had created these documents, and the Forest Supervisor at that time asked. Senator Craco to stop the Forest Service process, which is outside of the realm of, you know, his his uh, uh, responsibility and his power as a forest supervisor. Uh, in my opinion, totally unethical. 
that that was done. And it was after that that um, the Idaho congressional delegation asked the Forest Service to suspend, and on went the lobbying uh, for the company in Washington, D.C. to try to promote this land exchange. And the legislation came forward in 2014? Or 15? Uh, no, 2014. It was and that's, that has, oh, I see, draft April 7, 2014. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's created a, a de facto suspension of the EIS process. There was actually lobbying going on before. Yeah, yeah. No, I. But, but one of the other interesting things about this draft is that uh, uh, Governor Otter has participated in the, the creation of this draft. <coughs> Because there was a carrot at the end of the, uh, of the stick for uh, at, the, at the end of the draft bill, which um, says that if this land exchange is consummated, then Glade Creek, which is a, the Lewis and Clark's most historic first campsite up at Lolo Pass area, will be, uh, which was given to uh, the state via Stephen Ambrose and some other philanthropists um, some time ago after Plum Creek decided to. Um, that the state would give that to the feds as part of the deal. I, when I read that, I was very disturbed. Do you have a question in the back? <clears throat> I'm Blake Ballard. I'm also a retired Forest Service employee with John. I'm one of the. I, have, I only have 24 years of the 100 plus years. <laughs> 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 But I initially became involved in the Loxall Land Exchange when, initially when it included as many as 15,000 acres on the Palouse District. Much of that would have been in, in Clearwater and uh, other counties, but most of them in Lake Park County. And uh, then, as has been mentioned, uh, when the, uh, the final or the uh, draft EIS comment period ended, and then the Forest Service came out with the um, information that it was the supplemental draft, which included the um, Idaho County alternative. And that that never eliminated the Palouse District partials. There were still uh, up to 15,000 acres. All, all acres that were in the original proposal was still on the table. And uh, as contingency acres, if the Idaho County uh, proposal. If, if it was adopted, it could include any part of those 15,000 acres. Now, when I was on the Palouse District, I was a, the, the uh, land exchange coordinator for the district. I'm not opposed to land exchanges, but in all the land exchanges I was ever involved in, it was to consolidate uh, within the district. We would trade some parcels on the district for uh, private uh, or state. We, we're at land exchange with uh, Mountain, with Bennett, with uh, the state of Idaho, but they were all geared towards consolidating within the district. We, uh, the, the Forest Service had uh, several acres in the Swamp Creek area down off the Dent Road, and uh, we had a land exchange that uh, traded that to, I believe, the state, Swamp Creek. Anyway, we traded it and consolidated on the district. We never had any exchanges that traded national forest land or private land somewhere else. The Palouse district is only 150,000 acres. It's the smallest ranger district in, in uh, the northern region. And as you're probably aware, it uh, consists of many scattered parcels that over the years we've uh, acquired uh, rights of way run property lines, it's, it's been well managed, it's all managed, it's not so isolated that it, that it hasn't been managed. So uh, those, those parcels that have been managed and were described by uh, Western Pacific Timber people and other proponents of the exchange said that those parcels were difficult to manage and therefore it would be beneficial to get rid of those parcels, but it was never the case because the, the groundwork was done to manage manage those parcels. Um, anyway, to to eliminate up to 10% of the district, as many as 15,000 acres was, was on the table in the original proposal, that would have been 10% of the district. 
uh, <clears throat> if you lose 10% of the district or even 7 or 8 percent as the preferred alternative described or included, that's a major loss to the district in the smallest district in the northern region. There's another potential land exchange just waiting to happen. That's in the Upper St. Joe. It looks a lot likely the uh, Upper Locksaw <clears throat> checkerboard parcels. If the Upper Locksaw land exchange was implemented and took a lot of the Palouse District uh, parcels, then the St. Joe, Upper St. Joe would be next to come along. The whole point is <clears throat> this is beginning a snowball effect. If you lose many acres to the Upper Locksaw exchange, then many <coughs> acres to the Upper St. Joe exchange, then that becomes known as uh, trading stock for other land exchanges. And my concern, the concern of many people, particularly whose district retirees, is eventually the district would be obliterated. It would just, it would disappear because somebody in their wisdom would say, in the time of uh, cost cutting, uh, downsizing, and other, any other reason you want to think of, <clears throat> well, let's just get rid of the Poos Ranger District because it's inefficient to operate. It's not inefficient to operate now, but it would be if these happened. So that, that was the initial concern, is that the Palouse District could be eventually eliminated if some of these earlier exchanges, such as Upper Locksaw, which would require no private land on the Palouse District, if those were allowed to, to be implemented, then it could lead to the... Uh, uh, and, and this was a concern, but this was an issue. It became an issue because the public was concerned about it. But the Forest Service never recognized, and they never acknowledged that that was a possibility. And in my uh, thoughts, that was illegal, that it was not. They were supposed to consider any issue, any concern that was brought to the public. Uh, <clears throat> talking about the, the percentage that opposed the exchange, at the uh, Senator Rich's hearing in Grangeville, there were about 300 people there. And there are six or eight people, seven or eight people on a panel that had been specifically picked. And most of or as many of those were in favor of the exchange. That included the uh, retired chief of the Forest Service, Bill Bosworth, and the current uh, regional forester, uh, uh, I can't remember her name, Leanne Martin. Leanne Martin. And uh, he, our Pacific Timber people, they spoke in favor of it. There were several of us that spoke opposed to it. And then from the audience, I believe there were 30 speakers, 30 some speakers, and all but about four or five opposed the exchange. So when you consider the percentage of that, it was strongly opposed. I've got to, if you don't, if you wouldn't mind, I have a couple questions for you. Um, this is just informing me. What rationale did you said the panel, the majority, favored the exchange? What rationale did they have? Why was this, why was this a good idea? You mean the people that were on the panel? Yeah. The people that were, that were familiar with it. I was asked to speak as a uh, representative of retired Forest Service employees. Gotcha. But I'm asking about the people that, fa that favored the exchange, that were on the panel. Okay. They must have had a reason why they thought it was a good idea. Well, if you're a uh, what, vice president or president of Pacific oh, Timber, Western Pacific Timber, you're going to be in favor of it. So he had, and the, he Forest had Service, the, you know, the Forest Service is a stronger than in favor of it. But, uh, Dale Bosworth, the retired chief, he was a district ranger of the Powell District, which is right in the Upper Locksaw, and Leanne Martin. Uh, you, you don't have people on the Clearwater Forest now or in the region <coughs> who are opposed to this exchange. They're, they're handpicked to be yes. there. So, I have so. one more thing in front of uh, you guys are foresters. Is there any, now these are national forests that are trying to exchange, right? Uh, these are national forests that are trying to exchange. Yes. Is there any logging going on? Any selective logging going on? Or is there, I, I don't know specifically, but there are very likely yes. Uh, on the uh, on the national forest parcels. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't mean clear cut. I just mean is there any logging at all allowed on? Well, there could be. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, Thank you. Uh, but also, <clears throat> I have I have a copy of uh, Western Pacific Timber's draft legislation. I'll give it to you if you'd like to see it. I also have a uh, CD which uh, has some stuff that I put on in preparation for this uh, hearing in Grangeville. Including of that is uh, several of the pages of my 
29 page reply to the draft environmental impact statement. I didn't include the portions that specifically spoke to the Blues District because we're talking primarily about the, the Idaho County, or that was that was what the thrust of the hearing was. If you'd like to leave that with our clerk, you're free to use it. If you'd like to leave that with our clerk, you're free to use it. Beg your pardon? If yeah. you'd like to leave that with yeah, our I'll clerk, leave that, you're free I'll to leave use this, it. and if you'd like, I can send you the whole 29 page comment because that does, what I left out does apply specifically to the Blues District. 20, 29 pages. 29 pages. And you realize I'm not a young man. <laughs> 